before we begin, thank you very much to Anonymous Toy Reviewer for joining my Patreon campaign. Thank you so much. You know, if you want your channel shouted out or something, like, you could absolutely make that your, uh, <clears throat> you could absolutely make that your, your name, uh, and get that as, as a shout out too. I'm perfectly okay with that. You support me, I will support you. That's, that seems fair to me. But thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate the support. It means the world to me. Keeps the daily content coming. And remember, you are going to get Discord access, higher tiers. You're going to get reviews, uh, requests, or any video requests, really. Uh, and I'm working on a whole bunch of things for the two points in between. Because I, re I really want to be able to give back as much as I can to you guys. So, uh, that's all on the way. So, let us talk about the news. It is news roundup time once again, and we do have quite a bit to get through. I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet, because frankly, I'm running way behind today, and I need to pump this thing out. And we're going to start by announcing that we have a new Transformers fan stream announced for tomorrow. So, guess what my content for tomorrow is going to be? It's going to be my usual breakdown of everything that is going to be talked about here. Um, we do have a lot that's going to go into, uh, uh, RoboSend promotion again. I don't know how new that is going to be because we've seen a lot of the RoboSend auto converting prime. They have other items on the way, but, uh, we've seen the prime before, so I'm not exactly sure what they are, uh, what they're going for here. Uh, point being, it's going to be co-hosted by Sixo, uh, who's a really prominent in the transformer community. So, um, I'm hoping, the, I mean, I'm sure he'll do a great job, and I'm sure this will be a good presentation. Uh, so, uh, we'll wait and see, and I'll break it down afterwards if there's enough to talk about. And yeah, that's how that's going to go. Still waiting on my phone call to host one of these things. Uh, not, I'm still convinced I'm on a blacklist at Hasbro somewhere for whatever reason. Uh, but, you know, crazier things have happened. Like this. So, you remember when I said that we needed more Ratbat in the world? Uh, Hasbro listened to me. Oh, Hasbro listened to me. So, we finally found out where that minor Megatron is going to end up. It is going to end up in a two-pack with Senator Ratbat. And I love that we're getting a Hasbro release Senator Ratbat. That is awesome. This is the Rise of Tyranny two-pack. Minor Megatron, Senator Ratbat. The Ratbat is using the Scourge Mold, and I think at this point, it's just destiny that Ratbat is going to be Scourge's go-to repaint, uh, and I don't mind that, because they share a lot of things in common. I like that it allows Ratbat to have a set of wings on his back in robot mode, and I really love the look of, uh, I love the look of Senator Ratbat, his helmet design with the bat motif, and I, and yeah, this... If the club is anything to go by, we might get a Serpent OR out of this retool as well. So, again, crazy things can happen. Um, I could use a little bit gold. I could use a little bit more gold in the mode. But I do love the shades of purple and black they're going with. It looks really striking and cool. And then there's that minor Megatron. Uh, we're <laughs> That Siege Mold will not die Please, for the love of Primus, make a new Megatron toy. I hate how many times this mold has come out and it never came out with a clean G1 Megatron deco. You had to accept battle damage at some point on it somewhere in order to have it. Kind of annoying. Kind of annoying. I'm hoping Studio Series 86 amends that and we get some crazy new take on uh, a, a G1 tank Megatron that looks a little bit smoother and uh, a lot cleaner as well. Uh, but it's a cool, it's a really cool two pack. It's a really cool two pack. I would get this for the Rat Bat alone, uh, and then the Minor Megatron from IDW is just a little bit of icing on the cake. Uh, still, looking forward to that. Uh, there's a rumor of a listing coming out as well. Uh, so apparently there is a listing for a Dying Prowl. So apparently Earthrise Prowl in his like anime like as he's dying form, which is a pretty morbid toy. Um, it's going to be in a two-pack, and we have no idea who the two-pack partner is going to be. I'm going to assume it's probably going to be a battle damage uh, Ironhide. Um, but the only, like, like surefire guess I think I have on that one. It makes sense, at least, at least to me. So, we'll see. Um, this is something that we might also find out about with the live stream coming up tomorrow. Uh, they are promising some Generations reveals, and that would make sense. So, 
keep an eye out. We're not sure. This might be a this might be a weird one. This might be a really weird one. We have shots in hand of all five of the current core class Dinobots, and they are looking nice. I really like how this set of figures looks. Oh my god, oh, they look great in the robot mode, in the, in the beast modes. I love that. Uh, I love. I love that Scar fits in with them without like seeming like he's like out of place and or too similar to the other two big four-legged ones. Um, how similar he is to Snarl might make or break that comment, but for now, I really like having him in the group. Um, Swoop's a little bit too blocky, but at core class, what are you going to do? But yeah, this is looking to be like a nice little desktop-sized team. I will say, like, in robot mode together, they all look really, really nice. I like how all of them look that way. Um, and then we get to Volcanicus. Now, this is where I find that it's impractical to try and turn the Dinobots into a combiner because the proportions on the individual characters is so vastly different between like Sludge and Swoop. How do you how do you meld all that together and make sense of it and actually make everyone look like they're correct? So Swoop, I think, makes a pretty weak looking arm compared to Scar. Um, and this is kind of where the the overall design and the approach might fall apart for me. I'll wait till I have some official shots of how he looks combined in order to make a final decision on that one. But for now, yeah, um, I'm probably not going to have this guy in uh, in combined mode for very long. I think it's going to look way cooler as just a small pocket-sized uh, set of Dinobots for my desk. And that's probably gonna how probably gonna be how he lives, if only so I can keep Scar on hand, because I get the feeling uh, Scar is gonna be a nice fiddle transformer from the look of it. All right, let's move on to some uh, movie toys. So Yolo Park is a we have official in hand shots of the Yolo Park uh, Transformer Rise of the Beast model kits, and they're looking really good, and they're looking really big too. Like this is a little bit bigger than I had in mind. They look like like good like seven inch scale figures. They look great. There's a ton of paint going on. It looks spot on. Now keep in mind they model they they uh, advertise these as model kits. They're barely considered a model kits. Like it's really just like the last stage of assembly is not done, and you have to do it yourself. So if you just want like this really nice representation of the characters from the movie, this should be a very good looking and hopefully affordable uh, alternative. Yeah, the articulation on is really good too. Yeah, this is turning out to be really, really nice. Um, I might grab, uh, I might grab one or two of these um, just to see how they are, because like I think that is like the best looking primal we have so far, uh, and it doesn't transform. Uh, but you know, I, th I think I like these. I think I might go for these. Uh, for ones that can transform. We have shots of Studio Series Voyager Rhinox with potato quality screen caps. I apologize for that. But we do get a general idea of the, how the figure functions in hand. It looks like he's pretty involved as far as a Rhino Transformer goes. Uh, definitely trying to do things differently from the last two Rhinoxes that have come along. Um, I do like the overall like shape and look of his uh, beast mode. If I saw right, the legs might be a little bit hollow in beast mode. Like the the screen caps are really unorganized here, so I'm trying to trying to get back. I'm trying to get a good shot of it. Uh, and we're passing by air. Like so, look at that. Look at that. See, like that's ugly. That is ugly. See, like this is hollowing. I can understand complaining about because it's just right out there in, in the open. Um, but I zoom past just about every other photo we needed to see. I like the big masher hammer. Uh, I like that the head sculpt actually does look like Rhinox. Like, it actually has some of the, the choice elements that the character needs. Uh, a, a customizer is going to go nuts making this thing look uh, Beast Wars accurate. Uh, and it's probably look great in the process. Uh, but yeah, like, it looks interesting. At the very least, it looks like there's a lot more color going on than the, uh, than, than the mainline release, which I think is just, like, brown and gray, and that's literally all that's happening. This is not bad. This is not bad. Um, I'll wait and see. I want some clearer photos before I really make a call on that one. All right, next up on the uh, the Rise of the Beast listing. Uh, so this is our uh, this is our Beast Alliance Scourge and his armor, uh, Scorponok. Uh, this is cool looking. 
this is cool looking. Now, these are still like ridiculous and weird, but you know, I do kind of enjoy the gimmick when I'm in the mood for it. So, uh, not, t not anything terrible. Uh, again, Scourge has been colorized to make him a little bit more distinct and uh, like something kids would appeal to more. Uh, the armor forms this interesting little uh, set, you know, set of shoulder pads and helmet for him. These always end up looking like their arms sit way too low, but uh, he gets away with it a little bit better than some of the others I've seen. Uh, and yeah, he's just like a nice solid little truck transformer. Uh, you know, if if you just want to boil it down to something that simple. So nothing too complex, nothing too weird, but you know, it's another one in the list. I do like that, uh, as far as I know, the armor is all cross compatible. So if you buy Scorponok, you can combine it with Optimus, I believe. Uh, just I like the mix and match elements like that. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you this because I don't think this is too spoiler. We have a look at Stratosphere from the movie. Um, yeah, and it's fine. I'm going to get back to normal resolution now. Um, it's another one of those designs that incorporate very humanistic elements like the mustache. I've never been a big fan of that look in the live action Transformers. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's like overtaking his overall aesthetics. So we will run with it. Uh, just be glad that Stratosphere has a robot mode to transform into. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I'm basically just showing this to preface the fact that we are about to go into a spoiler territory for the movie. The movie's getting close. Uh, we are just a few weeks away from its debut. I have advanced screening tickets to enjoy, so that will be my day at the movies uh, in a few weeks. Uh, but for this, um, I, if you don't want any spoiler, because we're so close to the movie, if you don't want any spoilers, uh, feel free to scrub through the video until you know, until uh, you see the next full screen image like this. Uh, I'm just going to talk through a lot of things that some new trailers revealed. So. Here's your spoiler warning to skip ahead if you want to skip ahead. Three, two, one. You're in the thick of it now. All right. This one is actually not too bad. Uh, it's really just a centerpiece for Mirage. You get to hear him talking a lot more and get a better feel for his personality. So uh, it's a good little... The, this trailer is actually a good little piece just to get a feel for the, what is supposed... What seems to be like he's going to be the main character of the movie. Um, and yeah, like I like him so far now that I can hear more of his voice and hear full lines that haven't been chopped up for trailers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mirage might actually be a cool character. Uh, we'll wait and see on that, but I'm cautiously optimistic on him. Next up is the next spot, which is Threat. And this one actually does have some meat to the bones. Uh, these, two do com these two commercials do have new footage if you want a few extra precious few seconds uh, but this one actually reviews reveals a few new things that we had not seen before oh, oh yeah, sorry I did I did a uh, I did say don't scroll through scroll through until you see the next full screen image so I can't really like show it here uh, but go to TFW 2005 check out the headline for yourself I'll go ahead and tell you uh, we have a we have a sighting of Scorponok so he might actually be in the movie and transforming and all that we might actually get a Predacon in the movie which would be kind of cool uh, and then there's, you know, what you see right here at the top, the the title bar. Uh, and then you have uh, this, like, red-eyed, heavily armored primal uh, that is uh, in the, 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 tr the thumbnail for this trailer, the preview for it. This one is cool looking, and it's a little bit different than the standard primal. So now it has people kind of wondering, and there's something to actually back this up. There is a rumor, there's a name, there's a cast list that is now the extended cast with a bunch of extra characters. So, Museum Keeper, Bishop, Receptionist, Miss, uh, Miss Green, uh, the other Diaz family. All those are now listed with actual actors or voice actors. But the name on the casting list that caught everyone off guard is the name Ape Link. There is... Uh, so Primal's only real repaint at retail, Ape Link, is actually in the movie, so that might actually be who this armored Primal is? That would be interesting. That would be really interesting that of all characters, like a BotCon character just made it into the live action movies? Mostly because they didn't want to re make another model for another Maximal, so they just redid Primal, but hey, we'll take it. Could be cool. 
It could be cool. Now, keep it as a rumor right now, but it's a weird name to suddenly pop back up unless there is some meat to those bones. So I'm interested. I'm curious. All right, I'm going to say we're officially out of spoiler territory. Um, right now online, if you want a little bit more about the Maximals in the movie, or the Autobots for that matter, or the Pr Terracons for that matter, if you want more about the Transformer characters, uh, some Rise of the Beast bio cards are now online that give you uh, at least a rundown of what the character is about. Nothing that is too spoilerly, spoil spoilery. You might be able to glean something of the overall plot from this, but I don't really think it's uh, too bad of, uh, of a spoiler or anything. I think it just kind of informs who the characters are, which is kind of cool, because we haven't had bio cards like this in a long time. Uh, so if you want a little bit more in-depth about who the characters are, or why Wheeljack looks like this, uh, then go ahead. Uh, there is some info out there now. Uh, we also found out the runtime of the movie. There's there's a conflicting report on this, but I think this is okay. Uh, the film apparently clocks in at one hour fifty seven minutes, with uh, a little bit extra for credit, or like an extra twelve minutes for uh, credits and previews on top of that. Uh, so yeah, that's a pretty brisk runtime for a live action Transformers movie. It certainly beats being over two and a half hours long. Uh, so I'm hoping this one means it's a little bit snappier, you know, less, uh, less fluff, you know, um, more the, just more dead air cut left on the cutting room floor. I hope this is a much cleaner and sharper edited movie, uh, as a result, like, cause this, this just barely gets ahead. Like at two hours, I start getting exhausted of the movie unless it's really doing good and really engrossing me. But po for, for popcorn flicks full of explosions, I, I can't do over two hours. Like, that's just draining. So this, this is, optimis this is optimistic. I like this. If you want a little bit of merch coming out, uh, then uh, Porsche has teamed up with Rise of the Beast to create a little bit of merch for you. Um, ridiculously expensive merch. Uh, so if you want, there's a really cool Autobot baseball cap with a Porsche logo on it for the low, low price of $60. Uh, if you want the T-shirt, uh, this T-shirt, which is a full-body print T-shirt of Mirage, uh, but on the back, on the front, all you get is Autobot X Porsche. Uh, that's going to be a $90 shirt. And then for $200, you can have the Mirage sweatshirt. Everything with Porsche is overpriced. <laughs> everything so that ex that extends to the shirts which are by the way just kind of walking billboards for the porsche brand but you know we kind of overlook that because ooh, neat transformer logo uh i'm not going for this i'm not going for this i could buy a shirt or i could buy commander class optimus prime from armada hmm gee which i wonder which way i can go uh speaking of places to go the world's first Transformers-themed indoor entertainment center has just been approved and announced for develop in Saudi Arabia. Um, yeah, it's you know, apparently this is going to be similar to the cafe where it's just like a big like sports entertainment. I assume it's going to be like a sports entertainment park uh, where you can just go and be around Transformers and Transformers imagery. Uh, this is just sample art, artistic samples, of course. Um, yeah, um, see, with the with the restaurant in Hong Kong, I could kind of see myself going there someday. But uh, Saudi Arabia is, uh, they're, they're trying their best to put on a better face than the last decade or so. But there's a lot of things like human rights violations I would have to get through first before I'd be willing to go. Um, it's just weird that, of all places, it's Saudi Arabia that gets this like weird theme parky thing. Um why not Orlando? Put it in Orlando. I don't. I want to. I want to drive three hours to see this. Um, but yeah, it's just another. Ran, it's another random transformer spot in a, a country very far away that you will most likely never go to. But it'll be at least interesting to see how they make a theme park entirely based on transformers. Something from G1 was recovered, and I love when things like this were recovered. This is background art for the G1 cartoon, so uh, we get a whole bunch of little detail things. Um, there's the metal crushing machine from, uh, oh man, 
I can't remember the episode. It's, I didn't like the episode. I remember that. Uh, I just remember it was a very badly drawn episode. So it was fr it was from uh, ah yeah yeah was, okay White House okay that's Washington D.C. Uh, Mayhem name change to chaos. So he's from season three. Run amuck's character art. Let's see uh yeah like you could see how much work went into just making sure the background details are correct and like fully fleshed out. Really cool stuff. I love when things like this get recovered. It's a, such a nice look back into the past and how the original series was made. And to wrap us up for the day, Oreos. There are now Transformer branded Oreos. Uh, these were spotted in Peru. They are not available in the US yet, but I'm sure this is a matter of time. Oreos with Autobot logos, Oreos with Terracon logos, Oreos with Maximal logos, and a Decepticon logo thrown in for good measure. So that's curious. We threw, threw a random Decepticon in there, not a Predacon or something, but you know, we'll, we'll take it, we'll take it. Um, so yeah, uh, Transformers and Oreo now crossover, strangely enough. And with that, that is going to be my news roundup for the week. I'm trying to get these under 20 minutes, and it just seems to fail every time. But now you're caught up on the news for the week, and I thank you guys for watching. Tomorrow we'll have a lot more news based on whatever the fan stream announces, and we'll be here to break it all down then. So thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next time. Uh, it's the bosun's turn. <laughs> he's looking at TJ's character, and he's just like, what you gonna do? Right. I blow him a kiss. <laughs> uh, what? I love him. <laughs> I love him. What the hell's your problem? He's just gonna pull his can crossbow and just fire at you. That's fair at this point. <laughs> <laughs>